morning, Joe Deary, Powerful Improvements, Putnam, Connecticut. I'm out here in Thompson, Connecticut today, working on this seven unit multifamily home. Uh, we got some vinyl siding here, but the trick we have is we've got this scalloped slate siding up top on that flat surface by the dormers. And there's lichen and black mold and whatnot all over it. So we're gonna try to knock that down and that's a pretty good shot. That's uh, a little over three stories. I think I'm gonna hit that downstreaming, um, but just in case I can't, I brought my orange stepladder, like the one you saw yesterday in my Gambrel roof wash that was not mine, that one is mine, okay? So in an effort to turn the heat up on this a little bit, I'm gonna change out my injector orifice. I'm gonna show you how we do that. Uh, when I bought the Flow Pro, they sent me a little card here that holds them, all different sizes, different ratings. This one is a 2.3. The one that's in my machine right now is a 2.1. That's a 1.8 and that's a 1.5. So I'm gonna swap out the 2.1 for the 1.5 and that'll make me draw much hotter. And we're gonna see what we can do. I'll show you how we swap that out here. It's pretty easy. Allen wrench, okay, that fits the key. See their Allen heads in the back. Okay, so real easy. <clears throat> then you just come in here to your injector and disconnect. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you reach down in there with your Allen wrench and you take out the fitting that's in there. Hopefully. Two hands on it. Hold on a minute. Just needed a little bit of friendly leverage. I'm hoping that my wrench has hold of this enough that it just comes right out. Oh, no. Dropped it. Okay. So that means <clears throat> taking the injector all the way off. No problem. And there it is, okay, see? Now we're back on, we go get the other smaller, look at that thing, nasty, corroded. That's probably not the original uh, injector that came with this. I'm gonna to need to use two hands. Hold we're on. all back together there. <clears throat> now we're gonna pull some hose and see what we right, get. We got a little bit of wind, and to my surprise, I am hitting this with nice saturation too. Nice and heavy. I'm actually able to get up on that drip edge on the high roof. Really surprised. Surprised, but not surprised, I guess. Uh, I wanna, the, custom, the client is not here yet. He's gotta let me into the basement to uh, connect to the water here. And I'm just trying to do a little bit with what I have in my tank so that I can show him when he gets here the expected result. And I'm guessing he's gonna be real happy. These gutters are bad. Uh, we are putting up probably 1.25, maybe 1.5. Of course, we've got the 12 volt. If it doesn't begin to move that dark mildew this on there pretty quick, I'm gonna try shooting with the 12 volt. In which case, I will need my step ladder. As I do not quite make this shot with the 12 volt. Yeah, let's see. We got a leaking O-ring we're gonna take care of. Hopefully that'll be an easy fix. And then I'm also gonna pull the 12 volt because I'm not just getting the, I'm not getting the movement there that I think I need and I don't want to spend all day 
Okay, I got three bars on the water. Good buddy Brian Goldsmith sent me this bag of Vite and O-rings earlier this year, some various sizes in there. And I've been swapping them out, swapping these out for those as need be. Brian, thank you again. On the ladder, and a customer has just arrived. Oh, hitting that brown spot. No problem. And let's see what kind of transition we get. This is about 6% on here now. And it should make a big difference. All wrapped up, ready to head out. And I'm real happy with how this came out. There are some things going on up there which are not organic, that are not coming down. I've got some iron staining, which I can see is orange and rusty that is not coming down. And also there's some roofing tar and goop uh, over here on this side, which is also not coming down on the bottom right there by the air conditioner. But otherwise, I think we got a real good result. I'm happy with it. Hoping a client can get over here in just a few minutes and take a look. And then we can get on to the next one. All right, I'm set up and running on my next project. Truck's over there, connected to the water. I pulled hose down between the buildings here because I'm washing this garage. I gotta go up on that roof up there, forcefully remove some debris, wash this building, wash that building. One interesting little thing I'm doing is I'm washing the windows on the second floor. So I've got my brush on a stick. I'll be putting my 16 up there and those windows need a little brushing that was incorporated into our deal. Uh, this building has got a lot of lichen on it. Fairly heavy, but fairly dry. I believe that's gonna come right off with our normal house wash mix a little bit of dwell time should come right down and here we go i am still running the 1.8 injector so a little bit hotter than i normally run i'm expecting it'll work a little quicker i'm probably going to run it just for the rest of the day see how we do although the next house may not be that dirty because it's out in the middle of a sunny hill. Oh yeah, it's coming right off already. Piece of cake. M5. on the back of this shed and there's an international scout just like mine sitting here i'm going to go around the other side and see if i can get a better look at this thing that's awesome dude just like mine exactly i think it's the same year and everything
This is like finding treasure to me, man. These things don't exist, especially in New England, in any kind of shape. Oh yeah. See, completely rotted, gone, all underneath, just gone. Really has not much value. Looks like it's got a transmission in it. That radio right there is worth about 150 bucks as is. These are called West Coast Mirrors with the international symbol on them. These are probably 150, 200 bucks as is. So there is some value on this thing. Rear seat, the thing's 300 bucks as is. These seats are hard to find. So there is some value here. I don't know. I wonder if it's got a motor in it. I'm guessing it does. I can't see why it wouldn't. It's a plow on the front. Well, I'm gonna see what the guy might want for it. Interesting. Yeah. That rear tire carrier right there, highly valuable, something that I need, and this tailgate. So I think I might be off making an offer on this. See if I can't pull some select parts off of it. I'll have to get it out of here also. All interesting. Right. Here's my window washing process. It's clunky. I'm buying a longer pole probably today at Lowe's on the way to the next job. Oh God, look at this thing in here. In the garage. So not for sale. Not for sale. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right, we're set up and running on the next and last project of the day. Got my hoses all pulled, connected to water. We got this extended cape with a few dormers. It's got a little shed dormer in the back. It is very dirty up in the dormers and on the dark sides. So it's pretty windy. I'm up here on a hill, nice neighborhood. I've been in, in here before. I think I've watched that one or the one next to it and another one down there on the end. Uh, but we're pulled around. I'm going to go as far as I can. I got the whole 250 pulled off the truck, work our way back, end somewhere in the driveway so we can reel it up quick and easy. Still running that 1.8 injector, hoping to get through this pretty quick.